five past late. Come on, we're going to be late. Oh, you what? Oh, come on. Hurry up, we've overslept. Matthew? Emily? Wake up, you'll be late for... Long love. It's all right, Mum. You take your time. She hates that commode thing. What you got there? Lucky Bill. Never rains, but a posy. Eh? I've just had my rates put off the shop, I know. I've been thinking, what if I asked Jackie Dixon about that chef's job she's been advertising? What? Work for someone else when you've got your own business to run? I know it sounds mad, but we're desperate. I thought if I got the job off Jackie, then you might be able to cover my hours in the shop. <sighs> I don't know anything about pizzas. Well, I did all right the other week when I left you in charge. You said it was a double. Yeah, well, that was just a one-off, wasn't it? And anyway, what about me mum? What's going to happen to her? Yeah, but that's the whole point. There'd be no boss to answer to. So if your mum needed you, you could always close up for a couple of hours and come home here. At least I'd still be here. Mm, I don't know, me. Yeah, well, I do, babe. I mean, it's the only thing that I can think of to get on top of these bills. You're not organising this, are you? What? Challenge contest down the Legion. My, what's wrong with that? It's naff. Hey, it might be naff to you, but it'll go down a storm with the members, I'm telling you. 25 quid first prize, woo. It's not about money, is it? It's about having a bit of fun. Well, listen, I'll be careful where you put these up if I were you. Why? Well, it might be a little bit embarrassing if Bev clocks it and turns up to do it then. I mean, that's where she got a first break, wasn't it, down the Legion? Ha, 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 very funny. Yes, what? Look at this, lads. I don't believe it. It's all for Bing. It's all bump on that garage franchise thing. So I guess I don't believe this. What? The writer's bursary. Do you reckon I don't fulfil the criteria as a working writer and they're not going to give me any money? I don't believe I spent months in prison to write that book. Well, that's it, then, eh? It's official. You are not a writer. Hang on a sec. This is from the publishers. Oh, are oh, yeah. Big public. Oh, my God. What? Thousand pounds, advance payment, and a thousand pounds on publication. What, they're gonna pay you? Does that mean I get back all the money you scounds off me? Hang on a minute, they can't do this. Can't do what? They want me to pay them two grand. Hang on, what's that Ollie Simpson playing at? They want you to pay them. <laughs> and this book's gonna make you richer than Geoffrey Archer. Think you better think again, my son. <laughs> so he's made me an offer I can't refuse. At least this way I'll have an understanding boss. I'm sorry to be a burden to you, love. You shouldn't have to be worrying about me. But at least I'm a bit better this morning, eh? Those painkillers must be doing the trick. Hey, you're not a burden, lad. And one more mouth to feed. And you've lost Elaine's wages because of me. It's no start to married life being broke. Which reminds me. It's about time I did something to help. Oh, Mom. Yeah, I'll take it. I've told you before, Glad, I don't want your money. It's not a huge amount, but it'll be a bit of help. It's £500, enough to cover that rates bill for the shop you got. No, Glad, that's far too generous. Do you want me to knock a note off? We're not having it. Hey, it's no more than my board and lodgings for these past few weeks. Take it. No! Oh, go on, son. Oh, Glad, I don't like taking money off you. It's the least I can do. Take it. OK, but only as a loan. He's a stubborn article, isn't he? <laughs> All right, it's a loan if that's the way you want it. Thanks, girl. Well, what are you doing hanging around here? You better move yourself, see if that chef's job's still going. And you better go and open up his pizza shop for him. <gasps> <laughs> oh, thanks, Mum. <laughs> mm. All right, can I have a word with your dad, please? Dad, something to see you. How's your nuts? Have you heard from him lately? Uh, no, I think he's phoned Mum a couple of times. So where is he then? I wouldn't mind going to see him sometime. I don't know the address. You'll have to ask Mum. See you, Dad. Yeah, have a good day. Yes, Mike? Yeah, I've just heard from the publishers that you put me in touch with. Oh, good. Yeah, and obviously you forgot to tell me that they wanted me to pay for the publication. £2,000 they're asking for. Ah, oh, yes. 
What do you mean? Oh, yes, what's all that about? Uh, I'm sorry, but it's what they call vanity publishing. Vanity publishing? Yes, if they think it's good enough, then they'll publish it at their own expense. But if they don't, well, you have to pay. Well, why should I have to pay? Like, I thought it was promised a proper deal. Like, what about all the work I put into it? All the work Lindsay put into it. OK, both of us put into it. Ollie, I've had to wait months for this, and now they're asking for two grand. I haven't got two grand. Look, I'm sorry, Mike, but I can't help you. It's between you and the publishers. Yes, but, I mean, you know these people, don't you? Can't you just have a word? Tell them I haven't got 2,000 quid. Look, I'm sorry, but it's not my problem. I have no influence over their decisions. Ollie, look, mate, all I'm asking you is to make a phone call. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Why do you want to work for me when you've got your own business next door? Well, Elaine wants something part-time. You know them, I'm not being so well, and um, I just fancy going back to do what I was training for. And does she know anything about running a pizza place? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've been showing her the ropes for a while now. I see you've got it with Jimmy and Lindsay open house. Well, I'm only offering 40% of cover on everything you save up, you know. OK, so it's down to us to get as many customers in as we can. Hey, I wish the last two chefs had been as enthusiastic as you. Hey, without enthusiasm, there's no point, is there? See, I just can't get my head around why you want a job like this. I mean, you've got your own business and you haven't done any chefing for donkey's years, so what's going on? Ah, it's boredom, Jack. I mean, I've worked in hotels at London at one time, you know. I've even worked on a cruise ship. <laughs> so I can do a lot better than just there uh, a marguerite with extra cheese. <laughs> right, well, I've got a couple more people to see, so can I let you know? Yeah, nice one, yeah? Jack. OK. okay. See, see you, know. Big Michael, just the man I want to see. Any chance of putting one of these up in your place? Big talent composition down the Legion Friday night. Yeah, no problem, sir. Cheers, mate. Hey, uh, you and your missus are more than welcome, you know. Should be a good night. Oh, nice one. Right, see you. See you, Jack. See you later. Mick. Uh -huh. Right, love, where shall I put this? Uh, it's all right, Dad. I'll put it up. <laughs> oh, cheers. And, hey, don't forget, you and your mates are more than welcome as well, you know. Oh, yeah, I'll tell them. You'll be dead excited. <laughs> good girl. Ta-da. See ya. Oh, I was just bringing this up to you. Oh, where are you going? To the restaurant. Are you going back to work? Well, I can't leave it all to David. He's up to his eyes with this garage franchise business. Oh, I should do something. Uh, why don't you stay here? You're not 100% yet. Well, should I come in with you? No, 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 there's no need. Well, I should do something. I mean, I, I need to do something to take my mind off things, distract myself. Look, um, the garage have been on to me. Uh, you could go and collect the car now that you're off those crutches. It, it's been there for three weeks. Well, and I... then you could uh, drop in at the supermarket on the way home. I'd rather come into the restaurant with no, you. I don't want to rush things. <sighs> Look, just collect the car and do the shopping and that'll be enough for one day. I'll go and get my coat. That's it. It's an Alcatraz. Ooh, um, olives? Pepperoni. Mm. Oh, nice. All right, cousin. What are you doing? I'm working. I got the sack from your other job. The sack? Why? For taking too much time off. All right. Yeah, well, I couldn't work full time and look after my mum, could I? That's my fault, isn't it? Not helping out enough. Yeah, well, you did what you could. No, I didn't. Not since we had the fallout. <sighs> look, I hate us not getting on. Yeah, well, maybe you should have thought about that before you kicked off, eh? Look, that's why I came round here, to sort things out with Mick. Can we just forget what happened and all take turns looking after that? Barley, eh? Yeah, Barley. Me and you and all Mick. Barley. Well, if you want to start now, you can sit in with me mum tonight. I've got my first evening shift as a pizza queen. She means a first night's training to be a pizza queen. <laughs> what, do you mean it's only going to take one night? Hey! <laughs> of course, I'll sit in with her. I'm sorry we had to phone you about the car. Oh, it's all right. I understand. I wouldn't have minded storing it for a few more days, but the boss, well, you know how it is. 
Well, thanks for keeping it this long, and thank you for being so patient. Bye, Mrs Farnham. Right, love. Has Mick put me poster up yet? What poster's that? Well, he said he'd stick one up in the shop, but I can't see it. We're having a big talent competition down the Legion, so if you've got any talent you want to show off, that's the place to be Friday night. I can just about cook a pizza. It's the only talent I've got. Yeah, well, hey, don't let that put you and your mates off coming, will you? Yours truly is a compere, so I can promise you a good night. Uh, the job centre's the other way, Shakespeare. All right, Linz. Hiya. Look, Linz, there's something I need to talk to you about. I've heard from the publishers of my book. How oh, I? Yeah, and uh, they're willing to print it. Uh, really? One does never cease? Yeah, well, the thing of it is, like, it's a bit of a complicated deal, you know. Because I wrote most of it, you mean? No, no, it's not that. It's just, well, I have to pay them 2,000 quid to have it printed and bound enough. You have to pay them? Yeah, yeah, but, I mean, once that's done, I can sell it to whoever I want and keep the profits, like... So, I was just wondering if you fancied going halves with me. You are? Well, like you say, you wrote half of it, didn't you? Why didn't you get real, eh, Mike? I don't care how much of that book I wrote. It's crap. And nobody's gonna want to read our stupid story anyway. And I certainly wouldn't pay a penny to have it printed. <laughs> For God's sake, Mike. They must have seen you coming. Thanks. Hello? Yes, that's right. In the toilet, well, can't you get around? Oh, I see. Yeah. I'll be there right away. Thank you. Emma, um I have to go somewhere. I'll uh, I'll be about an hour. Okay. I think they're out, mate. Old cars have gone. Oh. Right. They haven't gone away, have they? Who wants to know? Run the neighbourhood watch, do you? Nah, I'm just being careful, that's all. Their place has already been screwed. I was just wondering if they'd gone away after the accident and that. A new relative or something? Nah, not like that. It's all right. I'll call again. Cheers. Yeah, see ya. No wonder he cut our hours down. He must have planned it, shipping his new missus in here. Oh, come on, Jimmy, can't go blaming him. Why not? Listen, not a lame one. Had a perfectly good job working in that biscuit factory till he decided to get it in here. Where's skin to us, you know? All right, why don't you get your kit off again? He could always do that, couldn't he, Lens, eh? Uh, Give them lady artists a little bit of a thrill and make a few bob while you're at it. Your mum's still laughing about that. <laughs> oh, funny, funny. Listen, I'm telling you, at least the money was good. Three times what I get in this place. Oh. Uh, why don't you enter the Legion talent competition then, eh? There's £25 prize, eh? Oh, are you? Doing what, like? I don't know. It goes um, Jimmy Cork in the one-man Chippendale. <laughs> hey, Peter, it's on your way, you. Get out of it. See you later. Class him. <laughs> <sighs>
don't know why you don't go in for that one. Go away, you're joking, aren't you? Maybe you get up, give a little song. Come on, Dad, I can't sing. Lindsay, I've heard you're in the shower. You've got a nice voice. It's a pity Dixon's run, isn't it? Might have been a laugh there. Look, Dad, why don't you go? Give me Mum a good night out. Forget about all this Ron stuff. But Lindsay, I'm skint. I'm gonna get skint. I know he's a couple of hours back. Well, I'm sure you can afford one night in the Legion. <sighs> she hasn't been out for ages. All right, then, yeah, go on. I will. On, um, one condition. You enter that competition. Susanna, you can't stay in there forever, darling. Should I call the doctor? Leave it to me if you don't mind, Dad. Uh, thanks for calling me. Come on, Susanna, open the door. It's just me here now. University. If you hadn't done yeah. that, you'd been settled in a proper job by now. Crap. You would, but three years spent messing around and sitting on your bum. But most of you are unemployable. That sounds like sour grapes to me. I mean it. It's made you think you're more important than you are. All these big ideas you have. Oh, yeah, look who's talking. What about this place? Hey, it's here and it's real. It's not some stupid dream, you know. Have a bottle of lager, please. Bondy's not into your chat up spiel, then. Yeah, no, I don't think so, mate. It's my sister. Oh, sorry, mate, didn't realise. No, no, it's all right. Cheers. Yeah. So, did you find the farms then? Nah, I'll try another time when things are settled down a bit. Have you dropped something, mate? Eh, yeah, no, no. Look, I know this sounds funny, like, but are you a copper? <laughs> what makes you say that? Well, it's just the shoes and the kecks in there. Now I'm with the fire brigade, mate. North Liverpool subdivision. That's why I was looking for Mr. and Mrs. Farnham. Oh, what? The crash, when they lost the kids. I was on that shout. We had to cut the mother out of the car. Uh, I don't even know. Did you have to do that? Yeah. Well, someone's got to do it. It's not all cats stuck up trees. So, do you get to do that kind of stuff all the time, like? Done me share, yeah. Do you want another one of them? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. We had this real horror show job on the East Lanks Road last summer. Lorry and two cars. And that's 4 50 change. Bye. Thanks. Hey, hey, everything all right? Yeah, mm, just about. <laughs> hey, Mick. All right, Jack. Listen, I've only got a minute, but I just wanted to tell you that the job's yours if you want it. Yes. Really? Oh, great. Thanks a lot, Jack. I mean, that's to be sure you're going to give it working in this place. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I'll be right. Brilliant. Can you start tomorrow then? Goes past ten. I'll be there. Great. See ya. Yeah, see ya, Jack. So, I'm well and truly in at the deep end, eh? Well, at least it gives us a chance to sort out some of those bills and pay him on that 500 nickel back. Mm. This could be the biggest pizza order in the history of the universe. <laughs> Hello, Peter Farley. I hope not. Not on my first day. Fancy a cup of tea, Mum? Not for me, thanks, love. I don't want to be sat in that throne of mine half the night. Now, what a biscuit? I'm fine. Hey, you can switch that rubbish off if you want. I've had enough of it. Thanks, love. Oh, Mum, can you fetch me pills off the side there? Yeah. I feel like I might sleep a bit better tonight. Mum. What's this? What, love? A cheque made out to Mick for £500. Hey, this isn't your house. You shouldn't be snooping around. Well, what are you giving him money for? Well, I haven't paid a penny for my keep since I've been here, and they've got a few money worries. Did he ask you for this? Of course he didn't. He's not like that. He's a proud kind of fella. But this is out of your savings. We hardly know him, and you're dishing out hundreds of pounds to him. Like you said, love, it's my money. <sighs> Yeah, and how long before he's back asking for more? Before you know it, he'll have bled you dry. Oh, for God's sake, love, don't be so dramatic about it. It's a loan. He wouldn't accept it until I promised to let him pay me back. Oh, I, I can just see that. Listen to me, my girl. I might have lost the use of this blasted leg of mine, but I'm still all right up here. I know Mick Johnson and I know what I'm doing. All right.
Do you want another one, Ben? No, nah, you're okay. Oh, go on. I'm on early tomorrow. I'd better get off. I'll see you again, eh? Yeah, whatever. Anyway, I'm in here most nights, so. Thanks very much. See ya. See ya. All right, so. Uh, could have a bottle of that uh, German lager, please? Yeah, 180, please. It's all right, Jack. I'll get this. Oh, thanks. Look, I'll, um, about my book, mate. Look, Mike, I'm sorry, but I've told you my position on your book. Yeah, well, I was just thinking, right, you know that company, it does proper publishing as well as vanity publishing, doesn't it? So I just wondered if you could have a word. Mike, why don't you just write this off to experience? I just need a chance, that's all. Look, I read hundreds of books a year. I know my job, and I know you'll never, ever be a writer. But I just need a chance. I mean, if you could... You're wasting your time. You might like the idea of being a writer, but you haven't got what it takes, so why this ridiculous pretense? I'm not pretending. You are. You'll never make it. You've been kidding yourself for months, so it's got to stop. But I know I can do it if I just get the break. You're fooling yourself. You'll never make it. You've got a degree. Why don't you use it and, and find a job you're suited to? Look, just forget about the drink. I'll, I'll see you later. Well, that was telling you. Yeah, he reckons he knows it all, then. Yeah, well, I reckon he's just about right about your soft book. <sighs> Susanna. Why are you up? You should be in bed. Dan, are you listening? We're really going to have to stock up on food. We've nothing in. Susanna. Sorry? Oh, I tell you what. Uh, why don't you pop down to the supermarket, get some things in? Oh, I don't know. Well, I I'll write a list out for you, shall I? You'll manage. Just take things slowly. Well, I don't want to get into a state again like I did yesterday at the garage. You'll be fine. You've got to try and keep doing normal, everyday things. I know. I'm sorry. Come on. Let's, uh, let's get this list done, shall we? Hi. Hi. Where's Cassie? Oh, 
Oh, you tell me. Oh, you haven't been arguing again, have you? No, no, nothing like that. It's just this place is a lot slower than I'd like. Well, you've got to give it time. Yeah, I guess so. It doesn't help having to man two tills. Hi. Hi, Dan. Hello, darling. I'm glad you're both together. Here, I forgot to give it you this morning. Dad? What is it? You haven't forgotten, Dad. It's your anniversary. Oh. Ooh. Never mind, I forgot to. You both forgot. You're hopeless. Well, at least you didn't forget, Dan. Thanks very much. Yeah, thanks. So what are you going to do about it? You should go out and celebrate. Go to that place near our old house. What, High Woods? Oh, no, it's far too expensive. Well, it's your anniversary, only once a year. And I'm going to Stevens tonight, remember? Do you fancy it? What, after a day in here? Are you kidding? <laughs> go on, what's stopping you? Well, High Woods it is, then. <laughs> Now you've got your checkbook and cards. Yes. And I'll nip back later to see how you've got on, okay? And just remember, there's nothing to worry about. Just take your time. All right. See you later. How strong a hint do I have to give you, Michael? Eh? This lot, the tea. You could have at least done the spud, so. I'm busy. Busy? You? You don't know the meaning of the word. No, I'm serious. I'm making up figures for me book. When are you going to give up on that bloody stupid book? No, listen, right. If I get it printed for two grand, I mean, I've got 5,000 copies of five pound a throw. That is 25,000. Now, that is serious money. How the hell are you going to sell 5,000 books? Well, even three quid ago, that is 15,000 pound. Can't wait to see Ollie Simpson's face if I make that kind of money. Michael, you are living in a dream world, son. Don't you realise to sell stuff, you've got to have a market, like Bing and his USPs at the garage. Huh? Unique selling points. Something you don't have. Of course I have. This is a real-life adventure. I mean, Dad, how many people do you know who've been locked up in a Bangkok prison? Michael, I'm telling you, son, nobody is going to want to know. But I'm selling them cheap. I mean, what you always say, pile them high, sell them cheap. You know what? You are exactly the same as Bing. He's no salesman, and neither are you. And anyway, you're too bloody idle to sell one copy, never mind thousands. Well, I was thinking maybe you could come in on it with me. Are you thick? It'll never happen, son. You're dreaming. What did Jack, how do we do? Hey, not bad at all. The chicken and sassy sauce went down well. 14 covers, right? Oh, there's no way you're going to get diddled, is there? Should we put it again tomorrow? Well, you tell me. You're the chef. Anyway, have you enjoyed it? Yeah, yeah. Makes a nice change, you know what I mean? All right. All right. Yeah. Mmm, stay severe. I like the hat. I like how you look quite smart. Hey, easy, ladies. I'm stood here, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, listen, I've just handed over to Lindsay and now I'm getting off. All right. We're we going to pokers after? Uh, yeah, I'll see if my mum's all right. We always come last unless my mum's on our team. <laughs> so I'll see you later. Yeah, all right. Well, you can get off if you want. What, early dance on my first day? Nah, I'll go and finish off in the kitchen. See you later. See ya. See ya. Bye. Bye. All right, Jack. All right, what are you doing here? I couldn't stand me out for being on my back anymore. Listen, do us a favour, give us a bottle of lager and I'll sort you out when I get my jail. Mm, don't tell me. Spent all your money drinking with that bloke last night. Hey, Ben, you mean? Oh, um, so that's his name, is it? Oh, yeah, aye. So you're interested in him, are you? To know. I haven't had a chance to make up my mind, yes. And don't forget, you owe me for that. I'll just stick it on my tab. Um, listen, Jack, you know about this book of mine? Oh, not again. Well, what is it now? Well, I was just thinking, you know, if I had someone with a bit of money behind them, then I could get it published and, you know, I'd make at least £15,000. Don't even ask. Won't you listen to anything Golly Simpson said last night? Yeah, well, I don't want to waste all the hard work I put into it. And you're the only one I can come to. Forget it, mate. Go and get a proper job. Emma, you all right? Oh, I'm shattered. Uh, where's the shopping, darling? Well, it's in the boot of the car. Could you fetch it in? Yeah, of course I can. Look, I tell you what, why don't you go inside and uh, have a lie down, yeah? Oh. Look, the 
Where's Max? Do you think we should go over and say hello? See how they are? Yeah, I suppose it'd be that. Hi, Max. Oh, hi. Hi, we're just wondering how you and Susanna are coping. Well, I'm not too bad, but Susanna, um... Look at these. Matthew and Emily's favourites. Well, it will take time, you know. I keep trying to get her to do things, to keep going, but I'm not having much success. Have you heard anything from the police? No, I'm just hoping that no news will be good news and there'll be no charges to answer, but... I don't think she could cope with the prosecution on top of everything else. What about you? How are you? I've been back at work, but it's hard. I keep having to come back to keep an eye on Susanna. You look exhausted. Yes, plus I am. Look, Max, if you and Susanna fancy a change of scene, why don't you come over and have a drink with us this evening? Yeah, it's our anniversary. Yeah, maybe we could all have a drink before Ben and I go to dinner. Well, till later then. Yeah, bye. Has our cast been round today? Yeah, she came round for half an hour before she went to work. Yeah, I wish you'd put that check away last night. She found it, you know. Oh. Well, I hope you pointed out it was just a loan. Yeah. And that it's none of their business. Mm. Let's hope it doesn't cause any more fallouts, eh? <laughs> Hey, hey. Hey, hope you've got Matrix permission to be out of bed. I'm feeling fine, Mick. Oh, oh, yeah. How'd your first day go? Not bad. Busy, like. Enjoyed it, though. Hope you had time to read a couple of papers. That's where that quiz master gets half his questions, you know. Lazy article. <laughs> so you're up for the pub quiz, then? I certainly am. I'm not having us beaten by that egghead team. Who? That lot with the posh voices. Student types. Hey, we'll murder them, Glad. We will if he doesn't try answering any of the boxing questions. <laughs> How's it going? Ooh, on time for a change. Look, you're not angry with me, are you? For forgetting. I'm embarrassed that I forgot, so... I hope you'll forgive a belated gift. Oh, now I do feel terrible. You sneaked out and got me something I haven't had a chance. Well, not exactly. I bought this a good while ago. <gasps> Dom Perignon, 1970. Spent more than I could afford on it in the, uh, the year we got married. I can't believe you've had it all this time. We haven't drunk any of it. <laughs> Neither can I. But today's the day. What? New beginnings. Cheers. Cheers. Who's driving? Oh, to hell with the driving. Let's get a taxi. Mmm. All the way to Southport. That'll cost a lot. Look, Danny said to enjoy ourselves, so let's not worry about the money. It's not like you. Well, it was at one time, before things started to go wrong. What, before I lost my job at Nivens, you mean? Look, I don't want to talk about things like that tonight. I mean, despite everything we've been through, well, we're still here, aren't we? But in Brookside Close. I meant we're still together. So happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Mmm. Do you realise we've been a whole week without a crisis? Compared to this last year, that's something really worth drinking to. Mmm, yeah. can I have a bit more of this, please? Just as long as you don't get the giggles. <laughs> no promises. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. In 1978, the manager of Leeds United left the club. After only 44 days. Who was it? I thought this was Brian Clough. Don't be soft. Oh, I wish I had asked more questions on film. I'm hopeless at sport. Who was it then? He went off to manage the Scotland team. Oh, who was that now? It was Jock Steen, October 1978. Are you sure? Put it down, love. Yes, now, question 10. John Conte, the Liverpool boxer, lost on points in August 1979 to a boxer now known as Matthew Saad Mohammed. Uh, but um, what was his name at the time of Conte's defeat? Oh, I love this. Uh, this fella's a joke. Who the hell would know that? 
Glad? I'll have to have one of my tablets. Are hey, you all right? <clears throat> yeah, I'm fine. Do you think she should go home? Who's she? The cat's mother. I'm all right. And all the better for seeing them. They're get struggling. They haven't got a clue. Do you know the answer, Glad? Of course I know. Well, I will uh, take a short break then. Drinks available in the bar. Back in five minutes. Yeah. But they don't. Mac Franklin, Atlantic City, New Jersey. I remember now, yeah. Mac Franklin, that's it. They'll write that on his tombstone. I remember now. I do. Put the other one. <laughs> At least we know she's feeling better. Mine's not in so to me. Done. <laughs> that's three you owe me for, so can you make that your last? Don't worry, you get paid for it. What about her that? Oh, no, here's trouble. Uh, can't wait to get away from that. Hey, Dad. All right, love. Where's me poster for the talent competition? Make oh, God, yeah. I'm sorry, Dad. I mean, I've been that busy. I just totally forgot about it. How could you forget? There's only two days to go. I'm sorry, Dad. I must have left it in the office. Hang on, love. There's something I wanted to ask you. Hey, no way. I'm not getting involved in any talent competition. Why not? You can go as Wonder Woman. It's nothing to do with the talent competition. I just wanted to ask you if you had any part-time jobs going. You know, bar work, washing up, anything like that. Oh, you're fed up with being retired now, Pops? No, but I'm fed up with you being stuck under me feet all day, not doing a hand's turn. The job's for him, soft lad. Me? You. Well, I'm not employing him. He's useless. And anyway, I don't do skivvying jobs. I mean it, Jack. I'm sick of him floating around on the dole all day doing nothing. Well, I don't know. Oh, go on, love. Surely you can find him something. For me. Well, I suppose I could, yeah, but, but I'm no soft touch and I'm not having him freeloading off me like he does off you at home. Hang on a minute. Don't I get to say here? I've told you I don't do skivvying jobs. Right. Well, I'll put it to you this way then, Michael. Either you start work here tomorrow or you go back to ours right now, pack your things and do one tonight. So what's it going to be? drink this stuff too often. Can't afford to drink it too often. <laughs> nice, though. <laughs> Very nice. Now, you said you wouldn't get the giggles. I know, I can't help it. <laughs> Shouldn't you be phoning your taxi? Oh, with plenty of time, yeah. Oh, plenty of time, mate. Mm. Oh, God, who's that? If that's Mike Dixon hassling me about that ridiculous book, Oh, God, I bet it's Max and Susanna. Look at the state of us. I completely forgotten they were coming. God. It's Max. <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> You'll have to put him off. Go on, go on, answer the door. <laughs> Hi. Susanna didn't feel up to coming, so it's just me, I'm afraid. Oh, right. Uh, well, that's a pity. Well, she's managed to get off to sleep, so... I thought I'd take you up on your invitation. Um, uh, uh, modest anniversary present. Oh, that's, uh, that's really kind of you. Uh, but, um, well, like I said, Belle and I are going out to dinner um, near Southport, and I was, I was just about to phone a taxi. Uh, after I got change, of course. What uh, with one thing and another, uh, you know, we're uh, a bit behind, uh, running late. Well, um, maybe we could all get together another <laughs> night, um, perhaps when Susanna feels a bit more up to it. Sorry, I left it so late. Coming around. Oh no, 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 no. That's it, it's our fault. It's um, disorganisation. Look, take this anyway. Oh, that's uh, that's really kind of you, Max. Thanks. I'll leave you to it then. Uh, bye. Yeah, thanks again, Max, and uh, I hope Susanna. Feels better tomorrow. Oh, I feel so guilty after asking him over and everything. Was he very disappointed? Yeah, I think he was. Oh, God, what a mess. I better go and phone that taxi. Oh, no, don't. Please. Just phone the restaurant and cancel instead. Cancel? Why? Well, I'm just beginning to enjoy our anniversary. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for bonus questions. And in the kitty for three correct answers tonight is an impressive twenty-seven pounds. <laughs> yeah, let's have some cash now, please. Right, come on, you two, get your thinking caps on. We're going to win it this week. Hey, what chance have we got against that lot? It may be useless on sports questions, but they're still on with us. Hey, we might have only come fourth, but we're only six points in it. And tonight's first question is Liverpool events, past and present. Here we go, Mum. Right up your street. I'll do my best. What was the name of the submarine lost during sea trials in Liverpool Bay before World War II? Oh, I've just read about this. Uh, what do you know, Mum? The, the, the Nautilus. The Thetis. Oh, that's what the Thetis. That's question one. The submarine lost during trials in Liverpool Bay before World War II. And question two. This time, the living world. What is the name of the world's largest lizard? God, where does he get his questions from? The largest lizard. Do you know, Mum? Um, I do know. There was something on the telly about it the other day. The name of the world's largest lizard. K K Komodo dragon. Brilliant, Mum. <laughs> Two down, one to go. And the final question for the bonus of £27. Which is the biggest mountain range in South Africa? Oh, Mum! Mum, are you all right, Mum? Oh. I just had a funny turn for a minute, love. I'm OK now. Oh, uh, a bit more water with it next time, madam. Hey, can't you see that she's not well? No, never mind him. Come on, let's get her home. All right. Ace, you're going home. Uh, I don't see any suitcases in the hall. You felt serious, were you, Dad? Michael, I am deadly serious. Listen, if you don't accept that job, you can sling your hook tonight. Well, where would it go? Not my problem. All I know is I'm forking out to feed you and put a roof over your head, and you are not contributing one penny. Yeah, but you know when I get something, I'll sort you out, don't you? Oh, yeah. And how many times have I heard that, like? Dad, I can't work for our Jackie. She's my kid's sister. You spend enough time in that place as it is. What's wrong with standing on the other side of the bar for a change? All right, OK, but it's only temporary. I'm no scary, remember? Yeah, well, that's up to you. Although I will admit, I don't think I'd be too keen to stay in there myself if I had your education. Now, go and ring our Jackie. Tell her that you're accepting it. Oh, and listen, I want you to come and video me talent competition. I'll go away, will you, Dad? It'll be a waste of tape. Michael, the committee have asked me, and I told them you would. I don't want to know. Well, come on, it'll give you the chance to show off that new video you got off the insurance company. Oh, and by the way, uh, They've authorised a £40 fee. 40 Well, yeah, if there's, um, if there's money involved, I'll do it, yeah. Cheers. Oh, I knew we shouldn't have gone. Stop fussing. I'll be all right once I get me a doubt. Oh, well, let's get in the bed, eh? <laughs> Mum, where's your pills? I think I need them now. You said you were in pain just before. I know, but I'm all right now. <sighs> if we'd stayed in that pub, we'd be £27 better off now. You were? You mean you knew the answer to question three? Yeah. My Charlie went there once. The Drakensberg Mountains. Have you heard that? We missed out on the bonus. <gasps> right, that is it. I'm getting the doctor out. No! You're not. I don't care what you say, Mum. You're having blackouts and everything. I'm phoning the doctor. <laughs> I wasn't serious about you having a shave, you know. Well, just in case I get any complaints. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, you smell nice. Um, are you hungry? <laughs> One time to ask. Well, I just thought, you know, maybe we should have gone to the restaurant. Look, I'll make you something later when I've finished with you. Mm. But you don't mind missing out on dinner? No, I really enjoyed myself. I haven't relaxed and talked properly for ages. Makes a nice change, huh? Mmm. Mm. <laughs> so there is life after that in Georgia. <laughs> Please don't talk about them. Oh, I was just wondering what they're doing right now. What's wrong? Ollie? Oh, Ollie, please, I'm sorry. 
I didn't mean it. Oh, please come here. It's too late now. Once again, Doctor. Oh, okay. Let me know if there's any problem. Okay. Right. Bye bye. At least he's asleep. It'll be the injection. It's knocked her out. Let's hope she gets a decent night's sleep, eh? The pain's definitely getting worse, Meg. That doctor's right, she should go into hospital. But you know she doesn't want that. I know, but can we cope here? I mean, what can we do to help her? Oh, God. Just when I thought things were getting better. Come on, she'll be fine again tomorrow. Oh, no, Meg. I'm not so sure about that. All I can see is her getting worse and worse. Stay with us here on 4, the last in the present series of An Inspector Calls is next, on call with the Environmental Health Officers. Yes. Have a good time last night? Yeah, lovely, thanks. Morning, Dad. Hi. Joined me all last night? Uh, yeah. Yeah, lovely, thanks. I'm not letting on much, are you? Hung over or something? Yeah, just a little. It's a mistake drinking so much wine. Serves you right. Well, see you later. See you, Dan. Bye, Dan. Ollie. Look, I'm really sorry. Ollie? What about? Well, you know, about last night. Forget it. Oh, Dad, you made me jump, and I thought you'd already gone out. Uh, no, Michael. You see, some of us like to keep busy and not spend all day lying in bed. While you've been lying up there dead to the world, I have managed to put the washing in, empty the bins and get the paper. I'll have a coffee if you make it one, please. I don't know. Can you believe this, eh? It says here the bookies are expected to make £10 million from people putting bets on for this election. Last-minute betting bonanza before polling day. Why do people bother? They're only chucking good money away. So, who are you going to vote for, then? Ah, now, that is between me and the ballot box. No, I don't believe in telling every man and his dog who I vote for. Why? Why the point in voting if you're not going to stand up for your beliefs? Spare me the lecture, will you? It's true. I mean, it's about time things were shaken up a little bit. The likes of you have been living in a dream world for the past 18 years. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Well, let me tell you something, Sunshine. Where would you be if it wasn't for the likes of us, supporting you through God knows how many years of playing around, claiming to get an education? Mm -hmm. And where's it got you, eh? Go on, tell me that. Where has it got you? Nowhere. You're no better off than somebody who went to work straight from school. The only difference is you have managed to do very nicely, thank you, out of playing the system. Look, this isn't about me. All I'm saying is that people should be made to vote to stand up for their beliefs. And what about our Jacqueline? She's done all right without any help from the nanny state. Your problem is you don't know when you're well off. Right, well, I'd better go and get ready for me new job then. Sponging off me capitalist sister.
lad. Mum, what are you doing here? I'm wondering why you didn't wake me. The day's half over. I want to have a good soak in the bath and the chance to use a proper toilet. Oh, unless you want to get a wash in that first. Oh, Ma, go ahead. Cup of tea while I soak could go down well, love. Fine, yeah, I'll bring you one up. I can't believe it. She seems as right as rain. Yeah, I know. Don't ask me the stairs on her own. Do you think the, um, you know, the illness, the cancer might have stopped? You mean, like, gone into remission? Well, the specialist did say it could happen, you know. For months, years sometimes. Hey, you never know. Hey, we're open at 11, you know. Well, I thought I told you to go and get some lager and cider. There's plenty of time for all that, yeah. I am reading that. No, you're not. You're working for me. It might be a job creation scheme, but I'll my money's worth out to you. I'll go and bottle up. Oh, first day on the job and he's in trouble already, eh? Yeah, I'll soon knock him into shape. Coffee? Mm, yeah, please. Hey, do you want to come to see Skinny at the Lomax with us tonight? Are you both going? Yeah? Can I let you know? I might do. Well, you're gonna have to be quick, cos I've got to get the tickets. Okay. Hiya, Jack. My wages ready. Yep, yeah, got them here. Hey, are you interested in getting your wages to learn to your girlfriend? Hiya. Hiya, didn't see you there. There you go. Cheers, Jack. Ah, oh, isn't it romantic? Listen, I was wondering what you were doing tonight. All right. It's just that I'm out of the place to myself. Am I the only one working in here, or what? You're only carrying one, crease. So? Well, even I can carry two. <laughs> I'll see you tonight. Ollie. Look, um, I was thinking, why don't we book a table at Highwoods for later? Try and salvage last night. I don't think so. Oh. Well, why not? Well, I've got some review copies I should be reading, and uh, I'm sorry, but I'm way behind. I better start tonight. I'll see you later. Yeah, I'll sort it out. You and Rachel have a nice time. Oh, cheers, Does that mean you're stuck here tonight? I'm sorry, Casey. Well, can't you go with your mate from the dance group? Well, I'd rather have gone with you. I know, but I just don't want to spoil things for Rachel. I mean, it's obvious what they're up to. Well, well they want the house to themselves, don't they? Oh, do you reckon? So, uh, what's he going to be like, then? What? Well, you've been with Christian, haven't you? So, what's he like? Well, that's for me to know, and for Rachel to find out. <laughs> I'll nip down and put your mum's cheque in the bank after work. OK. Be able to pay the lecky bill and the rate, eh? At least that'll be something. If you've anything else needs washing, love. What are you doing waltzing downstairs with that lot, Mum? If you've got anything you need doing, Mick. Elaine's right, you know, Glad. You may feel OK, but you don't need to go stretching yourself. I feel better than I have done in weeks. I know, but... I mean it. Feeling normal has made me appreciate how horrible it is not to feel normal. I'll enjoy it as long as it lasts, all right? So what are you going to do, then? Singing or dancing? We'll just have to wait and see, won't you? Oh, God, look. I don't believe it. Thought I was hallucinating, then. Mike Dixon working? Yeah, all right. It's only till something better comes along. Oh, hello. You're entering that talent contest at the Legion. Yeah. What, you? Entering my dad's effort? Well, everyone's got to start somewhere, you know. <laughs> it's not exactly going to be new faces, though, is it? I'll take a new song, Linz. Oh, the best selling writer there. So, uh, what's that going to be? I'm not telling anyone. Oh, go on. No, I don't want anyone skitting me. Yeah, wait till you get on stage. Uh, by the way, Jackie says you missed top corners and all the windows. I just sniffed the bog. I was looking in the fridge, just some fish and cheese there. Hey, was that you? Yeah. Oh, come here, quick. Gladys, what's happened? Oh, I must have slipped on something. Will you lift me up, lads? She might have broken something. We shouldn't move her. Hey, listen to the doctor there. I'm all right. Just get me up. Should I call an ambulance? No, no, there's no need for that. I'll go and get Elaine. No! Don't ring her. She'll only worry. Just get me into bed, then ring your dad. I think we should get an ambulance. No, just get me into bed. Hello? You got the tickets? Yep. 
still going away? Yeah, sorry. Oh, it's all right if I use your phone to ring Angela. I'll see if she wants to go with me. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Have you got your tickets? Yeah. Oh, good. I thought they might have sold out. Katie, if um, Angela doesn't want to go with you, maybe Rachel will. Yeah, that's an idea. Fancy it, Rach. Oh, no, I'm going to go with Christian. He won't mind, will he? Well, he's got the night off now and everything, hasn't he? Um, so where's he taking you then? I don't know. Probably just go out for a drink. Well, you shouldn't wind her up. It's terrible. I know. She's desperate to spend a bit of time on her own with him. Time on her own? Is that what they call it now? Do you want me to call in and tell Elaine what's happened? No, I'm all right now, son. Let her get on with her work. All right, then. Me and Danny are going to order is. See you later, then. Yes, yeah, see you. Hey, and thanks, lads. No pops. Hey, do you think I should get the doctor to give you a check-up? No, I'm fine. Well, at least let me tell Elaine. I'd rather you didn't, love. I know her. She'll be all for getting me into hospital. Yeah, that's true. I feel you're the only one I can trust at the moment not to lose your head. The girls just start panicking as soon as anything happens. They're too emotionally involved. They only want what's best for you, Glad. And I want to stay here. I don't want to be carted off in some ambulance just because I'm too weak and tired to put up a face. Yeah, that won't happen, I promise you. You're not next of kin. You won't have a say. I'll fight for what you want all the way, Glad. I can promise you that. I don't want to end up in some hospital being kept alive with drugs and oxygen tanks with pipes up my nose, not able to talk, not able to tell them to just let me go. You won't. But how can I stop it? What do I have to do? Write a letter to the hospital? Why not? What? Well, I've heard of this living will thing. And you just write down when the time comes that you don't want to be treated. You just, you know, want to be left to go. And they take notice of it? Well, if it's all written down and witnessed and everything, yeah. Can you find me some paper, Mick, and a pen? What are you going to do it now? Yeah, you can be my witness. I've got to get back to the cafe, Glenn. OK, well, you can witness it later. But I've got to do it today, Mick. If I get any worse, they'll have me in that hospital. I know they will. I've got to write it now while I'm still all here. Mick, thanks for being on my side. Your van taking care of you, what? Yes, she's just gone. Come on, Lindsay. Come on, love. You're cutting it a bit fine, aren't you? What's she up to? She wants to get a cosy just right before we see her. Oh, she hasn't changed, has she? Remember that time at Butlins? All that palaver over getting a Shirley Temple crock, right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Linz! One be a minute. Don't you be skitting her. Come on, say, listen, I made up for her. It's a pity it's Von Dixon's talent show she's going in for. Jimmy, I don't want any trouble between oh, the two. Oh, it's all right, don't be. You're not going on stage like that, are you? Don't be soft. I thought we were going to get a preview of you, Cosy. I've changed my mind. I just have to wait and see. Oh, hey, Linz. Right, I'll get my jeans on and then I'll be ready when you are. Told you. She's enjoying herself. Don't moan. Mm -hmm. Jack, you're going to be late for work. Oh, there's no rush. I've got plenty of time. Do you have to do our wash, not Rachel's? He's with tomorrow. It's OK. I'm not meeting Christy until later. Shouldn't you have left for your concert by now? Yeah, I suppose you better that. I'll walk around with you, Jack. I'll jump a cab to Angela's place. Yeah, OK. Um, Katie, what time are you going to be back? Well, I'll probably just stand at Angela's place. I'll be back in the morning. All right. What about you, Jack? Um, well, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not knackered. I think I could do with an early night. Although the girls from the salon are going to cream, so I might go with them after work. So you're going to be late then? Oh no, money messing. I won't be back. I'll be staying at Janice's. Oh great. I'll have a good time then. So um, what about you and Loverboy? Do you reckon he'll be coming back for a coffee? Mm, might do. And? And what? Well, are you gonna, you know? You know, let him have his wicked way. I don't know. I haven't even thought about it. Oh, Paul, you're the one you're gagging for. I know, and your little short skin. Do you think I look a bit tarty? Oh, no, Rachel, you look brilliant. Nice, I'm gonna go. Oh, remember, be good. And if you can't be good, be, be careful. careful. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm not 
you sure yet, mate? It, it, it'll be about seven to eight, OK? All right, good. Yeah. Hiya, love. You all set? Yeah, just a bit nervous, that's all. Ah, don't worry, this lot won't bite. Hiya, hey, love. Glad Bye. you could make it. Thanks. All right? All right. Uh, sorry, you can't sit there. It's um, committee only. It's chocker, this place. Told you we should have left earlier. Yeah, I'll have my table's over here. You can share with me. It's all right, Dad. Don't let him wind you up. So, what would you like to drink? You know, all right. We'll stay on holiday. Right, fine. To you. Shell, could I have half a lager? Uh, I've got you down as the sixth act on Is that all right? That's great, Dad. Thanks, Ron. No. Is me back on track, and it's on the right place in the table. Uh, pints of lager, love, and a Bacardi and Coke. Oh, yeah. uh, make that just a Coke. Linz? Oh, not for me, thanks, Dad. That's it. Is your mum going to give you the hand in a dressing room? I'll show you where it is. Come on, Jack. Um, I'll catch the place, so thanks, Ron. Right, sir. OK. Is your mic? Sorry I'm late, Dad. Oh, Jackie kept me at the cafe bar till the bitter end. Michael, I asked you to be early, didn't I, son? I wanted to show you what's what. I know what I'm doing, Dad. I'm videoing a flaky talent contest. You're videoing this? Yeah, under pressure, like, but... Oh, I don't know about that. I didn't plan on being recorded. Be soft, love. You'll be fine. Yeah, don't let that put you off, love. Right, come on. I'll show you this dressing room. Have you got any info for me? You know, um, just introduction, sorry, like... I'm a... Singer. Is that all? You can tell us now, can't you? Just wait and see. I couldn't. I don't believe him. He can't keep away from you. He was just being sociable, that's all. There wouldn't have been any harm taking a drink from him. Oh, is that right? So he could mould you and your chair out for you and all that. Don't you go spoiling Lindsay's knife, do you hear me? I won't. I won't. I'm just saying, that's all. I just wish it wasn't his show. Handsome full up. Um, do you want to do anything? I mean, if you're bored or. Of course, I'm not bored. Oh, good. That's all right then. I mean, I'm just enjoying myself being with you. Me too. And we've got the whole night ahead of us. Nobody phoned to tell. Imagine my surprise has come sunrise. They'd emptied my wishing well. There was folks with buckets all across the street. Have you heard these two? Flaming hell. Oh, Lindsay will be ten times better than this rubbish. Do you know what she's doing yet? No, but I think a cosy will go down well. <laughs> Has Dixon been hanging round that changing room with you? I put the bolt on the door. Happy. Why can't he just accept there's no chance of there ever being anything between you two? Why can't you? Ladies and gentlemen, what about that, eh? The multi-talented Heskin boys. Come back, lads, take a bow. Here they are, folks. Big round of applause. <laughs> Fabulous, that, lads. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Terrific. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's on with the show. And this next act is a little bit special for me because she lives in the same road as I do. And she's a lovely girl, just as good-looking as her mum, who's a friend and neighbour of mine. I'll swing for him in a minute. Just forget it, will you, Jimmy? So, everybody, hands together, please, and welcome on stage the fabulous voice of Lindsay Stanlow. Come on, Lindsay Stanlow, folks. <laughs> Washing up. Don't be daft, you don't have to. No, I'm not gonna leave it all for you. You don't have to leave it all. What do you mean? Well, you could always stay the night. Really? Yeah, if you want. You sure you want me to? Yeah. It sounds too sure to me. <sighs> I'm just a bit nervous, Chris. A bit scared. Yeah, I mean I'm dead scared of me. It's because of what your dad did. Well, you don't have to do anything if you don't want to. No, I want to. You're not going to hate me if it all goes wrong, are you? No, of course I'm not. Go! 
got all that, mate. Hinchy yeah. oh. oh. Marvellous, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Lindsay Stanlow and her fabulous rendition of Cher. Oh. Yeah. Terrific. Oh. Marvellous. We've got for you now another country act. Here she is, back country Beth. Yes! <laughs> Really? Wasn't she important? I'll tell you with an act that good, she could go on that telly programme. Hey, yeah. <laughs> hey, you boy. I think I'm ready for that drink now, Dad. Oh, I love you. You were oh, brilliant. You were brilliant. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Your dad thinks you're good enough to go on the telly, don't you? Oh, yeah. He's always had big ideas for me, hasn't he? <laughs> you never know, do you? Hey, I never knew you could sing like that. You want here in the bath? <laughs> Love, you know what you want to do? You want to get a little letter in the post to that Matthew Watson. Kelly! I don't think so, Dad. I know the limits of my talents. I like some people. Yeah, but you enjoyed it, didn't you? I did, yeah. Oh, it was brilliant. Do you think they'd let me go on again? Uh -huh. <laughs> right, I'm going up. I was going to make some sandwiches. Don't you want any? No, it's all right. I'm going to write a letter to Nat and Georgia. Good night, darling. Okay. No. Night, Dad. Night, Dad. What letter? Sorry? What letter to Nat and Georgia? I don't know. I think he just wanted to write to them. And you're going to let him? What? You're going to let him keep in contact with them? Well, of course I am. They are his brother and sister. <laughs> or are you suggesting that we pretend they don't exist, never mention them again? I just... Uh... I don't know. Look, Ollie, I know how hard this has been for you. Do you? You seem to have sailed through it. Got over it like it's nothing, no big deal. But you know me better than that. This has been one of the most <laughs> painful things. When you forgave them, Belle. And I, however hard I try. It's not that I forgave them. I just knew I couldn't lose them. No, you couldn't, could you? I don't want to lose you either. Don't you? No, I want us to try and get over this. Isn't that what you want, Ollie? Cheers for this, Mick. Taking your time. Well, no offence, Claire, but I don't think anyone would understand this racing. Um, what's up? Witnessed. There you go. Make sure I've copied the second bit right. I have told my family that no matter what my symptoms are at the time, and that even if it shortens my life, I do not want any treatment other than painkillers. They know that I do not want to be kept alive artificially on a life support machine, and I do not want to be revived if my kidneys or my heart gives out. That's right. Nice and neat, that Mick. Now you sign at the bottom. Claire, are you sure this is what you want? I'm sure. You want me to witness this? I want you to witness it, and I want you to make sure that everyone does what I want. I don't want to be some guinea pig to a gang of doctors. But things could get really bad. You might want treatment at the end. I mean, what happens if you can't eat or, or drink? Then let me starve. Are you really sure about that? More sure than anything I've ever done in my life. OK. But only if you're positive that's what you want. I am. I don't want to be messed about with in some hospital. I never want to see another hospital again, ever.
by for over two hours of uninterrupted comedy starting next on 4. Richard's in for a surprise when someone close turns out to be closer than he wants. A little family business in Caroline in the City. Now then. Look happy. Oh, couldn't be happier. Because I'll come let me coffee out here and watch the world go by, and that's exactly what's happening. The whole world's passing me by. That's how it goes in business. I and mean, sometimes there's no customers in the next door parlour. I'm talking about my private life, not my business. Oh, I see. Well, you'll have to get out more often, won't you? Make a few new friends. Sure, I would do only my busy mate's got himself a ball and chain. Hey, not a bit of roses, you know. Oh, why has Elaine finally seen the lights, has she? No, no, that's Gladys. It's getting really tricky, you know, Sam. Sometimes I feel like I'm being pulled from pillar to post. What do you mean? Well, Gladys is depending on me a lot more these days. I mean, Elaine and Cassie get too upset when she's got problems, so she tries not to involve them. So what's happening? Well, you know, she's really bad. She can't look after herself. She doesn't want to be kept alive artificially, so we've wrote a living will up for her. Oh, right, yeah, I've heard about that. No sort of life support machine, stuff like that. Oh, that's it. I mean, I respect the decision. It's her life after all. It's just that it's all being done behind Elaine's back. She doesn't even know about it yet. And you reckon she'll panic when she finds out? I don't know, but she might. And I don't know how I'm going to break it to her. I'll come back for the swing. <sighs> we are doing the right thing, aren't we? I mean, it doesn't seem right keeping them. Someone else could use them. Get on with this, then. Oh, Max, uh, have you, um... You all right, old son? Uh, yeah, just clearing away the children's things. Can I give you a hand? No, thanks, David. Um, just couldn't bear seeing them just sitting there every time we look out of the window. No, of course not. Sinbad's going to see if you can find a family that'll make use of them. Oh, good man. You come round for anything special? No, no, I, uh, I just thought I'd call in and see how you and Susanna were, that's all. Well, we're still here. Still breathing, doing things. Susanna's still in a lot of pain, but she blames herself, David. No matter what I say, the guilt's still eating away at her. Max, have you heard from Patricia in the last few days, I mean? No, why? Did she want to find out how the funeral went? No, of course not. Well, thank heavens for small mercies, eh? You all right? I don't know. Glad, are you okay? Do you think you've broken anything? Of course not. It was my own fault. I shouldn't have tried. Oh, Mick, do something. We've got to phone the ambulance. I don't want to go to the hussy. Just get Dr. Miller. 
Right. Uh, it's all right, Mum. I'm here. Let's try and get you up, shall we? Oh, uh, come on, you'll be all right. Uh, yeah, Doctor Miller, please. And for the finishing touches, do you think this will do the trick? Yeah, a bit of emotional black on my wigs every time. Mm. You and me are going to get a full report. You decent, Rach? Yeah. And on your own? Yeah, of course, come in. And remember, we don't settle for anything less than the full story. I'm just having a lie in. <sighs> Is that for me? Yeah. Um, we thought you deserved a nice little treat. Go on then, Rach, tuck in. Hang on a minute. What? We've been living together for about a year and a half now. This must be the first time you've ever brought me breakfast in bed. Well, we thought you might be too worn out to make it yourself. <laughs> if I was up half a night with Christine, you mean? Where are you, Rach? It was 3.24am when I switched the light off. So you did it with the lights on? Yeah, of course you did, didn't you? Hang on, I haven't even said what happened yet. But you did do it, didn't you? Come on, put a little sore misery, will you? Right, the breakfast is yep. going back. All right, all right, you win. We did it! <laughs> <laughs> Twice! <laughs> there you go. Got enough pillars there, Glad. Do you think the doctor will be much longer? He's coming, Mum. I thought we had the right dose now. We've checked it a dozen times, Glad, and it's exactly what they say you should be on. Maybe she's building up a tolerance to it. You know, maybe she needs to have a bigger dose for the same effect. We could ask him to try me on something different. Oh! If they can put a man on the moon, you'd think they could find something to sort me out. Well, it will be when I've given it a quick once over. And how much is it? About 30 odd quid, about 35 probably. Oh, right. No, I've been after one of those for a while now. You put it to one side for me, that's how it works, that is. Uh, well, yeah, it will do once I've checked it out, yeah. Will it be ready today? <sighs> Don't let the glass grow on your feet, do you? No, give it half a chance. <laughs> so, shall I call back Lisa? Uh, yeah, give it a couple of hours, I'll have it ready for you. Great, thanks. Okay. See you later. See you later. Hello, young lady. Surprised to see you sweeping the streets. Thought you'd have been besieged by hundreds of your adoring fans. You are? Your star turn at the Legion last week. Word gets round, you know. Oh, that. Yeah. You went all right, I suppose. Went all right? You won, didn't you? I hear you bought the house down. Cracked a few glasses with me singing, more like. It's hardly the impression I got. I'm looking forward to hearing you sing myself. Oh, I don't think so, Bing. That was just a one-off. I needed it for a laugh. Nonsense. If you're lucky enough to have been given these gifts, you ought to make the most of them. There's only a talent night at the Legion, Bing. I don't think I could hold me own in the real world. Everyone's got to start somewhere, Lindsay. <laughs> oh, Sinbad, can I trouble you for a moment? Yeah, of course, come on. I was going to ask you if Max had stopped by yet, but uh, obviously he has. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to pass this on to a mate of mine. Um, how was he, do you think? Well, as choked as can be expected under the circumstances, you know. Yes. Do you think he seemed strong enough to stand a bit of a shock? Well, it's difficult to say, isn't it? I mean, can't whatever it is wait? No, I'm afraid he can't. I... I've just had a letter from Patricia in France. It's uh, more bad news. Well, best of luck, mate. Well, your blood pressure's only up a touch. Well, never mind her blood pressure. She needs something to ease the pain. I know, Mrs. Johnson, I know. That's why I'm here. But it's worse than ever, Doctor. Are you sure the tablets she's been on are strong enough? Let's see what you've been getting up to now. Finding the right pain management plan isn't always easy, I'm afraid. I don't want to push the dosage too high too soon. Oh, whatever the plan, it isn't working. But to be honest with you, Mrs. Charlton, I'm inclined to think we've been doing the right thing up to now. I know that's not really what you wanted to hear. 
too right it is, isn't it? How can it be the right thing? She wouldn't be in pain like this if it was. That's really getting you down, isn't it, Mum? <sighs> well, you're already taking very strong painkillers. But she shouldn't have to be putting up with this amount of pain. Surely there's something you can do. Well, the guy even injects like the locum did the other night. I mean, that seems to do the trick. Well, I think under the circumstances, I should give your mother another shot, just to take care of the immediate problem. And I'll increase the daily dose of morphine sulfate tablets so that we can control the background pain. Is that what's in those NST tablets? I mean, do you mean morphine as in morphine morphine? Yes, that's right. Well, how long has she been on them? Oh, uh, a few weeks. Mum, why didn't you say anything to us? I, I can assure you, Mrs. Johnson, this course of treatments is in your mother's best interest. And is that what's in that injection? Morphine? Uh, well, yes. Technically, the name is diamorphine. <sighs> Are you sure it's right to be giving her so much? Oh, babe, it's going to ease the pain. I know. I just... Uh, well, when you hear the word morphine, it just, just makes me feel so scared. Well, I can't carry on like this. You'll have to give me something. All right, Mrs. Charlton. In view of the amount of pain you're in, I'll try you on the same dose the locum used. Oh, thanks, Doctor. Okay, Mrs. John? You might feel a sharp sensation here. Now, count to ten for me. One, two, three, four. This should begin to make you feel uh, a bit more comfortable. Six, seven, eight. You all right, Lillins? Yeah, fine, thanks. I thought you'd be getting your hair done like Shay after last week. Oh, do you know, Jackie, I only got up for a laugh, and everyone's been going on about it ever since. Oh, I'm not surprised. I've seen the video, I liked it. Oh, you haven't. I have. I thought you were brilliant. If only. Oh, still smiling then? Yep. Lovely breakfast, that, Jack? No, I'm not talking about the breakfast. I know. Actually, I just popped in to ask you if you know anything about the empty flats upstairs. Um, well, only that JC doesn't want them rented out to anyone at the moment. You're not planning to move out, are you? No, of course not. Christian is, though. Well, at least he's thinking about it. His flat's a right dump, and he wants to be, you know, a bit nearer to work. A bit nearer to you, more like. Yeah, well, the cat said more, he was just around the corner. Oh, steady. Hi, Rach. Hi, You look well. Oh, don't ask. Don't ask what? Why, this one's looking like the cat who's got the cream. All right, Jackie, I don't want the whole world knowing. Knowing what? Well, Rachel did the business with Christian. You never. <laughs> first time? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, God, I remember my first time. What a joke. Why, what happened? Well, we're in the back of this fella's car. And you've heard about the earth moving. Oh, it didn't. <laughs> it did, literally. You're going to let the handbrake off. Oh, no. Are you all right? Yeah, we were fine. We ploughed straight into this wall. The car wasn't a write-off, but the relationship <laughs> was. Anyway, you serious about this Christian, then? Mm, not really, not yet. Oh, not much. She's only asked me to go and get him one of the flats upstairs. Oh, right. Are you going to ask JC, then? See what I mean? Yes, of course I will. Thanks, Jackie. See ya. See ya. See ya. <laughs> Max. Hi, David. Is Susanna in? Uh, yeah, she's uh, upstairs. Can I come in for a minute? Yeah, sure. Yeah, please, come in. So, what is it then, David? It's something I should have spoken to you about earlier today, Max. What's the problem? Um, I think you should read it. It's from Patricia. Well, if it concerns me, then uh, she's been sent here for Just read it, would you please? Thomas and Alice are all right, aren't yeah, they? It's nothing like that, no, no. It's, um... Well, it seems that Patricia and Eric have been making plans about their future together, which involve them leaving France. Oh, they're moving to England? Well, well I knew that uh, Thomas and Alice wouldn't settle there properly. That's... That's marvellous. Um, when are they going? No, you see, that's the thing. They're not coming here. They're, um, they're going to Canada. Eric's got a new job in Quebec. That's the world, is she? Yeah. What's the 
have been an extra strong dose the doctor gave her. I know, it's worrying, isn't it? But the fact I gave her to her if there's anything to worry about. It just feels like there's no going back, you know. I mean, if she's having a stronger dose to kill the pain now, what happens next time? She's gonna have to have stronger again. I mean, where will it stop? You saw the difference it made to her. When the doctor gave her that injection, you saw the look on her face, didn't you? The, the sudden relief. I oh, know. I suppose what I'm really saying is, I don't want her stuffed full of drugs or in pain. It's going to be one thing or the other, though, babe. I don't know which one I choose. And what if those injections are addictive? I mean, morphine? You hear all the horror stories, don't you? I don't want my mum turning into some kind of addict. She's got enough to deal with without all that on top. Come on, I can't see that happening. I mean, the doctor must know what he's doing. Yeah, well, I hope so. Look, if you're not going to trust the doctor, who are you going to trust? Oh, no, I just... I just feel so helpless, you know, and ignorant. Hey, come on. We've got to do what we can for your mum, haven't we? And if we are ignorant, then there's bound to be loads of books that we can find out things from. Someone we can talk to. We've just got to find out all about it, that's all. That's the one really positive thing we can do to help your mum. Do you reckon? Ah, let's be realistic, babe. There's going to be a time when she's not in a fit state to make up her own mind, isn't he? Yeah. So you're a keen gardener, then? Not really, but it's got to be done, though, eh? That's very good for the soul, do you reckon, don't we? I know it's no good for my back. Yeah, it's no good for the knees either, is it? <laughs> you sound like a couple of old crocs here. You speak for yourself. So you do it all by yourself, then? Well, no-one's going to do it for me. No? Well, thought you'd have had some big fella doing all your digging and that for you. I wish. Well, like I said, if you ever need anyone. Do all your customers get such a personal service? No, not really. It's just that, well, uh, you're a nice person and, well, I like nice people, you know, spending time with them and stuff like that. Then. Is this a very roundabout way of trying to ask me out, by any chance? Eh, uh, no. Well, I suppose it is, yeah. So why didn't you just ask me straight? Well, I don't know, I suppose because I thought a nice-looking woman like you would have been spoken for. Well, there's only one way to find out who's been spoken for. You have to ask me. Um, you doing anything tonight, then? Well, yeah, I am. Sorry. So you just set me up for the brush-off? Just because I'm busy tonight doesn't mean it's a no-full stop. Well, uh, some other night, then. Yeah, go on, then. What nice at the end of the week. Really? Yeah, why not? I'll call back when lunchtime and sort something out. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, um, I don't even know your name. So what's wrong with a bit of mystery in your life? <laughs> see ya. Yeah, see ya, yeah. You're looking pleased with yourself. Just made a quick sale, haven't I? <laughs> hey, I believe you brought the house down in the Legion last week. You know what people are like when they've had a few pints in them. You clap anyone. Is that little, uh, Eh, uh, yeah, well, it's a guaranteed money back with dozens. It's a bargain, Harry, quick. Oh, right, so I was um, just, you know, thinking of getting something like that for our little Kylie. Well, tell you what, just hang on there. Seems it's you, and I'm in such a good mood. You can have it for a fiver. Oh, brilliant, Simba, thank you very You're much. Welcome. Now, are you sure it was a, only a quick sale you made to that one before? I mean, you seem to be giving each other a certain kind of look. Hey, listen, Corkill, mm -hmm. I always keep my personal life out of my business. That's how very much. That is, unless someone I fancy comes along. Oh, well, at least you've got a personal life. Well, I didn't until five minutes ago. So you and Mike still going your separate ways? Yeah. Well, that's a shame, man. Ah, no. I'm better off out of it. Well, wasn't that bad, was he? No, I'm just... I'm better off on my own, Simbad, you know. I can make my own decisions and... Do things the way I want without anyone holding me back all the time. Oh, nice one. Well, good on you. Nice. I shall see you later. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. See you later. Oh, Linz. Sounds as if you're ready to take on the world. I am. Hello, Sam. will be long. Just going to pick Gemma up from my mates. Hey, come here, you. Give us a kiss before you go. Hmm. Mm. I'll have to go out more often if I get this kind of treatment. Oh, thanks for everything you're doing for me, Mum. Yeah. I'll make you something nice for your tea. Did someone mention food? Aye, yeah. You back with us, then? <sighs> How long have I been out for the count? A couple of hours. How are you feeling, Glad? Like I've recharged my batteries and I'm raring to go. <laughs> 
So, what's all this about making something nice for me, tea? What do you fancy? How about some soup and cheese on toast? Ooh, yeah, I think we can manage that. Yeah, and I tell you what, a nice drop of wine would go down well. Wine? Yeah, wine. Mum, you can't go drinking wine. Why not? Not after all the drugs the doctor gave you. Well, it's not as if I'm going to be driving, is it? Or operating machinery. I just fancy a nice glass of wine with me tea. I'll tell you what, I'll get him some from the offie while I'm out. Red or white? Get one of each. We can drink them both, eh? <laughs> you all right, Max? You've been out here for ages. I had a letter from Patricia. Oh. Uh, right. What did she say? It's to David, actually. It's about the children. Our children? No, Thomas and Alice. Why? What? They're emigrating. What? Patricia and Eric are taking the children to Quebec, Canada, 2,000 miles away. Oh, poor Max. You can still visit, though. It's not so bad. Not so bad? Of course it's bad. It couldn't be any worse. How could she do this to me? She's taking the children all that way. It means I'll see less of Thomas and Alice than I do now. Well, at least you've still got them, Max. At least they're still here. No, that is the problem. They're not still here. I've already lost two of my children. Now I'm going to lose the other two. What? even pretend there's a slightest similarity between what has happened to Matthew and Emily and Thomas and Alice moving house. Have you no sympathy for anyone but yourself? They're taking the children to Canada. It's not just down the road. She's taking the children away from me. But they're not dead, Max. You're not losing them like I've lost Matthew and Emily. <laughs> At least you've still got two children. Even if they will be in Canada, you should count yourself lucky. Lucky? Yes. They love you, and moving won't change that. You can go and see them, hold them, watch them grow, but I can't do that. I don't have my children anymore. Why don't you understand that? You are talking rubbish. You know, I'd still have all four of my children if you'd have paid more attention to your driving. Reminding me, I have to live with it every minute of the day. And I have to try and go to sleep at night with it going around inside my head. Why did you have that drink, Susanna? Why weren't you more careful? Why weren't you just somewhere else? Well, I wasn't somewhere else. I was driving the car, and now they're dead. And I'm still alive. I'm as alive as Thomas and Alice and Mr. Wonderful Patricia. Should you just remember? When you're flying off to Canada to visit your beloved family, you just remember I'll be here on my own, dreaming about my two babies being dead because of me. That nightmare, Max, is never going to leave me. Never. Brookside's Johnson family will be among the guests on Light Lunch tomorrow afternoon. That's at 12.30. Coming up next tonight on 4, the pleasures and pains of a one-night stand in a cutting-edge special.
second post. Anything interesting? Nothing from Patricia, if that's what you were hoping for. I've left you some lunch in the fridge. I'm going to the restaurant for a couple of hours. See my briefcase, anyway. Wherever you last left it, presumably. I haven't seen it since before. Then. Before I crashed the car and killed the children. Look, Susanna. I know I was to blame. I don't need you throwing it in my face. Susanna, please. Mum seemed much better last night. Mm -hmm. She didn't even complain about me cooking, which must have been the first. That shop, that guy on Morphin seems to have settled with Ellen Mason. Yeah, I wish she was having treatment, though. You know, something to make her better, not just to keep the pain down. Your mum says she doesn't want any treatment. I know, Mick, but people change their minds, don't they? When she gets really bad, they're going to have to do more for her than just give her an injection, aren't they? I mean, I'm sorry I panicked over... Thomas and Alice going off to Canada, and I never meant to make it sound worse than losing Matthew and Emily. I, I was just so shocked by it, that's all, on top of everything else. You caught me at a bad moment. Not there have been many good ones over the past few weeks. What is it? Huh. Emily, look, oh. it's her handwriting. That letter she gave me before she went to the fire station. If you are clever and guess the first clue, at the end of the trail, there's a present for you. Green when you water me, brown when you... It's a treasure hunt. Green when you water me, well, plants. Doesn't sound too difficult, does it? I wonder what will be at the end of it. Why don't you just leave it? She might not have had time to finish it. Oh, there you are. There's something there. Oh, it's all wet. The, the ink's run. I can hardly read it. You sure you don't mind coming out of the cafe bar with you for a bit? No, of course not. I just I get a bit bored and sometimes waiting around between jobs. It's going to be busy today, do you reckon? Yeah, probably. It's been mad recently. All good for the profits, though. Oh, what do you like? Oh, I know. Next stop, world domination. Oh, talking of which, do you want to go together tomorrow to Brookie Gump? Uh -huh. Oh, hello. Where have you been recently? To go and vote, you divvy. Oh, God, yeah. My judgment not mean there's much point. I haven't got a clue I'm going to vote for. Well, you better hurry up and decide, then. You don't want to waste your vote like Rachel has, do you? Suppose not. But, well, if everything goes to plan, I'm not going to be in this country anyway. I'm going to be jet-setting around Europe dancing, so it's not going to matter who I vote for. Don't be soft. It's Parliament who decides whether you can work anywhere in Europe. So? Well, if the government wants us out of Europe, it'll be goodbye to all our freedom of employment stuff. Will it? Yeah. And if you couldn't go swanning off on your little European tours, then you'd be stuck doing the summer season in Southport every year. And how would you fancy that? OK, OK, part of political broadcast over. I'll come and vote with you. Good. Reflecting. That's the word. Reflecting back your happy face. Where's the mirror? It's got to be. Reflecting back your happy face. I'm hidden behind this place, so it's got to be behind the mirror. It's got to be. Max. Where is it? Ah! There! Told you. There it is. I was just calling to see if you need anything doing, Mrs. Farnham, you know, shopping or cleaning, like. Max is wrecking the house. And the car now. Oh, Max, please! Emily wouldn't be able to get into the boat of the car. It's not a race. Oh, Max, calm down, please. No, I'm perfectly okay. She's just hidden things in places I can't get to, that's all. What's going on, Mrs. Farnham? Max has found a treasure trail that Emily left. He's trying to follow the clues. Well, it doesn't seem to be in there. Uh, in a boot, my clue you'll see. Open the door and look for me. Well, I've done that. There's nothing there. Well, 
Maybe it doesn't mean boot like in the boot of a car. Maybe it means boot like in that song, Kinky Boots. Julia, you're a genius. Is everything OK? I better go and give my hand a... He might need me to solve the rest of them. Any luck? No, no, she's made the most incredible job of hiding them. And in the most inaccessible places as well. Aha. It's here. Oh, Julia, this is terrific. And Emily's been so clever. He's latched onto this treasure trail and I'm worried it's going to end in the most dreadful disappointment. He, he's so wound up about everything and we don't seem to be able to talk sensibly to each other at all. The very next clues in a small dark place. Something like towels to dry my face. Well, would you like me to try and talk to him? Uh, see if I can get him out for a beer or something? Oh, would you? We well, might help. He needs a chance to talk to someone. Yeah, of course I will. If he's up for it. Well, you better come in. So you can persuade him. Air and cupboard. It's got to be the air and cupboard. Ollie, come and see this. She's been really ingenious. Max, don't be too hopeful. Emily might never have finished the trail. She might have got bored or anything. Oh, it's got to be the airing cupboard. I mean, see, light towels to dry my face. I mean, she couldn't mean anything else, could she? Max, Ollie's come round to see you. Uh, yes, just to see uh, if uh, you, know, you want to have a drink or something. Have a break for a couple of hours. Uh, can you remember the last time you cleaned out the airing cupboard? Um, a couple of weeks ago, maybe. Max, Ollie's just... Do you remember, uh, Do you remember finding anything like this? That piece of paper that you might have thrown out by accident? Oh, I've no idea. I'm sorry. I mean, there might have been. I was always finding bits of tissue and scraps of drawings about the place. My memory is not as good as it used to be, I'm afraid. Max, what about the drink? Huh? Yeah. All right, Ollie, yeah. Sorry. Sorry about this. Um, I think I might just look down the side, see if it's fallen down there. So, uh, I think that's all we need, Jack. Grace, I'll fax this through now. They should be able to deliver some audio then. Hi, hi. All right, Miss. Yep. Did you want me? Uh, no, I'm just waiting for my free coffee, you know. Oh, don't you be giving people freebies and all. I've had enough of that with our mic. Ah, sorry, Miss. No coffee. Oh, well, that's OK. Next time you want me to do a job, I'll charge you the full worth. All right, all right. You can have one more coffee, but no more refills. Refills? What do you think I am? A biro. <laughs> <laughs> so how's the job going then, Ainsley? Hey, don't tell Jackie, but I can do this with my eyes closed, mate. What, you turned into daily thingy overnight, have you? Nah, it's all that pre-prepared stuff. So all I've got to do is watch my time and when I'm heating it up, and then make the stuff look nice on the plate. After all them years of training, what a waste, eh? Yeah, I'll cope, as long as the money's coming in. Well, uh, who needs money when you've got love? What do you want about? Well, what have I got that's brown, sticky and chewy? I don't think I want to know this. I've got a date, haven't I? Me, at last, after all this time, a date. And the way you were whinging on the other day, so, uh, who would? Ah, with a woman of mystery, no less. Oh, I see. So it's all still in your dreams, like? Only until Friday night. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure about this. You can go somewhere else if you like. Shouldn't be going out full stop, should I? I mean, what are people going to say? Oh, look, there's Max Farnham. His kids are barely cold in the grave, and, uh... He's going out drinking. Nobody's going to think anything like that. People who know and care about you will understand. They're not looking to judge you. If you say so. Look, Max, I know all about facing up to the gossips. And believe me, no one's going to have a problem with you coming out to unwind a bit. So come on, let's get a beer. I suppose I'd better tidy things up. Oh, never you mind. I'll see to all that now. You sit yourself down. You won't have to do a thing. Are you in? Yeah. Lindsay's just come in for a shift, so I'm off home. All right. Those sandwiches look nice. Do you reckon you could put one in a bag for me to take home for my mum? Yeah, of course. Make too much of a fuss, don't I? Uh, some sort. I know, I should back off a bit, but, well, 
I don't want her to think of herself as being a sick person all the time. You know, I want her to be happy, have a life, have things to look forward to, not just live life for the minute like she is. You're a lot like you, Mamina. You are? No, she doesn't like being helpless, neither do you. Yeah. And she wants a chance to make up her own mind about things that affect their life. That's you too, it's Do you think she's given up me? Slowly? I, uh, I think she's being realistic. I think she knows, you know, she's only got a limited future. Has she said anything to you about this, um, living well idea? No, what's that? Well, it's, uh, it's something that you sign that says, um, that if you die, the doctors should let you die with some dignity in peace and not, you know, try and revive you when your time comes. <laughs> not revive you? What are you on about? Well, if things get bad, she doesn't want to be put on machines to keep going. You, you might talk to through in the last week. <laughs> last week? Yeah. <sighs> but why is she talking about dying? I mean, that could be years off. But she doesn't know that, does she? Like I said, she's just trying to be realistic. I wish you told me about this before, Mick. Well, I thought your mum was going to talk to you about it herself. Elaine, she knows exactly what she wants to happen if things, you know, take a turn for the worse. Now, look, Mick, I'm not being funny, but I think the last thing you should be talking to me mother about is how she's going to die. Never mind whether we're going to revive her or not. We should be giving her hope. We should be finding ways to help her to live. Two lagers, that's 360, please. So what's Max doing? Is he drowning his sorrows there? Just having a bit of a chat, you know? Trying to unwind a bit. Yeah, well, I'd a bit more than a few lagers if I was in his shoes. There you go, cheers. Thanks. I don't know what I'm paying you for. Why haven't you cleared the empties off that table? Because Max is going on a bad one about his kids. I don't want any suit. I was going to go over, but I don't know. Probably wouldn't recognise me anyway. Why? What? Well, Ben will get the kids out the car after the accident, you know. Right. Well, isn't there something you should be doing, Mike? Like, work? Yeah, yeah, all right. Even Bron. Right, I want to get off. I've got rehearsals. Yeah, and I've got a stack of invoices to do. Ah, you can stay for another, can you? Sorry, I can't drink on the job. Why not? I could give you a lift home. I'm a fireman, remember? Oh, why? Look, all right, if you get a lift home on a fire engine. I meant a fireman's lift. I could carry you. I don't think so. Oh, well, no harm in trying, is there? It's been nice talking to you girls. Yeah, and you. I'll see ya. Yeah, see ya. See ya. Right, if you'll excuse me. Can you make a start on those glasses and check what mixes we need bringing up? You've only just been down the celery stock in the beer. Oh, tough. You just have to go again. Hey, I saw that. I'm allowed to win the shuffle, aren't I? Yeah. What is it, same again, mate? No, I'm gonna get off. Let you get on with your work. Oh, why? Just because all the girls have got off? Nah, to be honest, it's still in my head and seeing that Farnham fella. Keeps reminding me of the accident when he lost his kids. I'll see you again, eh? Yeah, see ya. Oh. Another drink? No, I'm alright with this, thanks. Go on, have one. Have a drink with me. Go on, then. Same again? Yeah, same again. We could go and get a bit of fresh air if you like. Have a little walk. I know, love. I know. <laughs> had a bit of a bombshell this week. Not only have I had to cope with losing Matthew and Emily, but um, Patricia's decided to emigrate. I mean, move from France to Canada. Which means I'll probably never see Thomas and Alice again. Just when I wanted to see them more than ever. 
You get to see them. Oh, there's a smaller place now. Oh. They'll be thousands of miles away. I'll miss out on so much. I know how you feel. Do you? Yes. A bit. I still find it really hard to come to terms with, let alone talk about Matt and Georgia going. I said I never wanted to see them again, but I didn't realize how much that would hurt. Well, at least they'll still be there. When the pain wears off and you do want to see them again, you'll be able to. I envy you that, Ollie. I'll never see Matthew again, will I? Or Emily. You know, the thing about her were her eyes. Even when she'd been in a real temper or she'd been crying, she'd just look up at you. I remember Georgia when she was about Emily's age. <laughs> All right, little madam. And, and all that anger that was building up inside over stupid things, you know, I mean, really, really stupid things like leaving glasses of milk to go sour in the bedroom or leaving clothes screwed up in a corner. All that anger would just melt away the minute that she looked at you. And because she's a... Because she was a, a pretty bright kid, you'd end up treating her older than she was. She used to say to me, Daddy, I'm only ten. <laughs> only ten, only. You know, it's hard thinking now of all the things that we'll never know about her. Meeting her first boyfriend, watching her biting her fingernails, and she's waiting for her exam results. And Matthew never taking him out for his first drink, never showing him how to shave, or knowing whether they were both up to going to college. And, and Emily, never giving her away on a wedding day. I really should be at home with Susanna. Look, Max, I know this sounds terrible. But you've got to think about yourself. You've got to find a space for you to grieve too. So you stay here. I'll get the drinks in. I wonder how Max is. He was so excited today, following Emily's little trail of clues. He'll be fine. Ollie Simpson will be keeping him company. I just don't know what to say to him. Or to help him come to terms with what's happened. Oh, now, come on. It's still early days. I'm sure once the shock wears off, things will settle down between you. Poor Max. You had such a lot to put up with the last few weeks, as if it wasn't enough dealing with... what happened to the children. He's had me falling apart all the time on him. Don't start upsetting yourself. There's no shame in grieving, and there's no saying how grieving will affect people. Max will be facing up to things in his own way. I know how much you're suffering at the moment, love, but at least you've got each other, and you've got to stick together. I know you can give Max the support he needs. I know you can. When Susanna and her boyfriend took the children to America, I, I remember thinking then, I've lost my children. And if it was going to be as far away as that, it was as if they were going to be dead. But this is different. Knowing now that I'll never see them again, knowing that I'll never be able to give them a goodnight kiss or, or shout at them, knowing that it's all over, Ollie, it's just unbearable. And I don't know how to handle it. I don't know whether to wear black for a year or keep the curtains drawn. I don't know how to talk about it to people. 
I don't know whether to put on a brave face or try to pretend to be cheerful and brave. Brave. <laughs> well, I'm not brave. <laughs> I'm not in the tiniest bit brave, Ollie. I, I just don't want it to have happened. I, I want them home tucked up in bed, or being naughty, or leaving glasses of milk to go sour under their beds, or making me lose my temper. Honestly, what I wouldn't give now for them to drive me up the wall. All right, Mick. Right. I'll tell you what, Miss. I think I'd want to die, too, if I lost one of my kids. I don't know how you go on breathing. How are they ever going to be the same again? They had their whole lives ahead of them. They had every hope and every dream to come. And I couldn't save them. I couldn't do anything on me. I'm their dad. And I wasn't there for them. Dads are supposed to be there for their kids. Dads are supposed to protect their children. And where was I? What was I doing? I was drinking wine with some rep. It wasn't even anything important. I was having a good time. I was flirting with her. Pretending that one wine was better than the other one. Just so I could get a better deal on the price. Just so I could squeeze out just a little bit of extra profit. And Emily. And Matthew. I let them go uh, once before. When, um, when Susanna and I split up, but at least I got them back. But I can't do that this time. Can I? <laughs> but come. They've gone, and I, and I want them back. I, I don't know. I don't know how. I just want them back. A new series next tonight with Mark Lamar revealing the alternative side to the world of American entertainment. Planet Showbiz starts after the break, here on 4.